Now that we've looked at what rational indices are, let's make things a little bit more interesting. Let's have a look at how we use rational indices and index laws in general with some of our expansion laws. So let's begin with a problem. Let's say I wanted to expand x the power of uh, a half and that was being multiplied with the x the power of 3 over 2 plus 2x to the power of let's say negative a half and then we subtracted 3 uh, x the power of negative 3 over 2 like that well to do this what I've got here is the distributive law where I've got a term out the front here that needs to multiply with every single term inside my brackets so the very first thing I'll need to do is I'll need to multiply this x to the power of a half with the x to the power of 3 over 2. So this will be x to the power of a half times x to the power of 3 over 2. This will then need to multiply with the second term, so that'll be adding x to the power of a half uh, multiplied by 2x to the power of negative a half. And then I'll need to multiply the final term, so we'll be adding x to the power of a half again, multiplied by negative uh, 3x to the power of negative 3 over 2. So let's now do this multiplication step by step. The very first one is I need to multiply this x to the power of half with x to the power of 3 over 2. And that's our first index law, where I'm multiplying two indices with the same base. So what I do here is I keep the base the same, so that x the same. But I'm now going to add the exponents, so I've got a half add 3 over 2, which is x squared. I do that here as well, because I've got two indices with the same base. So I'm going to be adding 2 here, uh, x, and then I add the exponents together. So it's a half, take a half, which is 0. And then over here, I've got to do the same process again. So it'll be negative 3, x, and then add the exponents. So it's a half, take 3 over 2, which will be negative 1. So from here, I can continue to simplify this. So uh, the first one I can't simplify, that's just going to be x squared. But the next one, I know that x to the power of 0, anything to raise to the power of 0, is equal to 1. So this is essentially saying it's 2 times 1, which is just 2. So I can add 2 here. And then with this negative indice, well, that tells me that that x needs to be flipped over to the other side of the fraction. So this will be subtract 3 over x to the power of 1, or just 3 over x. And now what you can see here is I've expanded the brackets here, and then I've simplified the statement by just using my index laws that I had before. But let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at an example, let's say I've got, uh, I don't know, let's have 5 to the power of x. We'll have our indice as our variable here. And we're going to add 2, and we'll multiply that with 5 to the power of x again, and we'll add 3 this time. And we'll have a look at how we might multiply this. Now, this is a bracket multiplied by a bracket. It means that every term in the first bracket has to multiply every term in the second bracket. It, which, with this case, it's a special situation. We can use our FOIL expansion rules here. But essentially what we need to do is we need to multiply this 5 to the power of x first with everything in the second bracket. So this will be 5 to the power of x multiplied by 5 to the power of x first. And then it'll be 5 to the power of x multiplied by 3, which I'm going to write the other way around. So that's plus 3 times 5 to the power of x. Then it's going to be 2 times 5 to the power of x. So let's add 2 times 5 to the power of x. And then 2 times 3, which is 6. So now let's use my index laws here. So I've got two indices with the same base, so I keep the base the same, so that 5 the same. But now I add my exponents, and x plus x is 2x. So this will be to the power of 2x. Now these middle terms here, if we considered this 5 to the power of x just to be x as a whole, this, this is essentially saying I've got three lots of x and two lots of x, which we'd collect together and say we've got five lots of x. We apply the same logic here, except our x is five to the power of x. We've got three of them, and we're adding another two of them. So in total, we have five lots of five to the power of x, like that. And then, of course, we've got our add six at the end. 
And now what I've done is I've simplified this as far as it can go. So as you can see here, you can start using the same expansion laws in combination with the index laws, even with rational indices and also indices that are unknowns. So, you know, your variables. But let's just, let's just have a look at one more. Let's, let's say I have two to the power of x and I'm subtracting two to the power of negative x but this time it's a perfect square, so everything's going to be all squared. Well, to do this one, I'm going to just bring in my perfect square rule, which was saying that if I had a minus b all squared, it was equal to a squared minus 2ab uh, plus b squared. And what I can do here is I can look at this and go, well, this is the same thing, except my a is now 2 to the power of x, and I'm subtracting my b, my b is 2 to the power of negative x. So what I can do to simplify this, so I can first say that it's going to be my a squared. So it's going to be this 2 to the power of x squared. Then I can go, well, it's going to be subtract 2, multiplied by my a, which is 2 to the power of x, multiplied by my b, which is, in this case, 2 to the power of negative x. And then I can add my b squared. So that's adding on my 2 to the power of negative x all squared. Well, from here, I can now start simplifying these by using my index laws. So this one here, I've got to multiply x with the 2. So this will be 2 to the power of 2x. This one here, first of all, I'll just simplify this one, so keeping the base the same. So this will be subtract 2 to the power of 2x take x. Well, that'll be 0, so 2 to the power of 0. And then this one here, I'll need to multiply the exponents again. So this will be adding on 2 to the power of negative 2x. And from here, I've now got a power of 0, so I can simplify this one a little bit further. 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So negative 2 times 1 will just be negative 2. So this will be 2 to the power of 2x. The middle term becomes negative 2. And then I'm adding 2 to the power of negative 2x at the end. So as you can see here, is we can apply those same index laws together with expanding bracket laws, even when we've got indices that are rational and also indices that are variables.